This time on Hack5, we're continuing our special series on proxies with public key encryption, key authentication in Windows, and SSH server setups in Linux. All that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Idea Paint. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. This is your weekly dose of Technolust. Yes, and we are continuing our story about. A what, continuing what mission to explore strange new worlds and new civilizations. Strange new worlds that live up in the cloud known as servers. Oh, I was going to go to or like Rice or something. What's up with that? Oh, this is a gift that we got from a guy named Charles. Oh, Charles from Option 8. You want to see? What did we get? Um, I alluded I to this some time ago. I'm assuming ago. it's a poster. I did have to open it up beforehand just to make sure it was, you know, PG. <laughs> sure, sure. So this is pretty, oh, you know what's wicked about this? Here, let's move these, because I think we'll actually be able to see from the top cam. How cool is that? I love the top cam. All right. All right. Here, I'll help so you. So on the one hand, you, you'll notice, like, this is a it's red a hat red poster. It's a red hat poster. That's, that's, that's okay. okay. Not that interested in the red hat portion. What we're interested in is this. Linux kernel ver oh. This is a poster a of the source code of the Linux kernel version 0.01. Oh my gosh, from 1991. wow. Back at, at, before it was even called Linux, and Linus was all like, hey, check out this cool thing, uh, like Linux. And, you know, and what's really so freaking sweet about this is if you look through the source code, well, one, there's expletives, and two, there's like awesome things about how like, this part of the code will never have to be changed. As These long are as the offsets into the read write buffer structures, whatever that means. Yeah, there are a <laughs> lot of other funny ones up in here. This is the pointer. Oh, cool. Wow. Yes. You know, one day when I actually have some time, I'll have to <laughs> read through there because that's or, pretty you neat. Know, write your own kernel. Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, that Still. obviously does not take long to no. do. No. So what are we talking about today? I'm well, so excited. Well, we're continuing our thing on proxies. And awesome. so last week we were talking yeah. about um, SOX5 proxies, of course, our uh, favorite implementation of those being, right. uh, or SOX5 being our favorite proxy implementation and yes. SOX5 over SSH, our favorite implementation of SOX5, because you can do it over different stuff. Regardless, we're having some more fun with SSH. Yeah. Last week we were talking about like you set up SSH on Windows mm -hmm. so that you could. Do I used Putty. It was awesome. And we were doing dynamic um, forwarding, and we were talking about local mm -hmm. forwarding and remote forwarding and things like that. Yep. But we were using password authentication. Yes, which is apparently kind of insecure. Well, it's not ridiculously flawed, but there's a better way to do it. So why not? Okay. Why not? In fact, why not couple it with? Lots of different things, you know. Isn't like, there always a better way to do it? Oh, man, that's the thing about Linux. <laughs> Go ahead and start emailing us right now about all the things that we could be doing a different way, you know. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, um, but I figured that before we start getting into the practical bits this week, which are I'll be setting up a server in right. Linux, and you'll be setting up uh, the client in Windows. Yes. Uh, why don't we Yay! get into a little bit more about the theory? Okay. And I figured before we actually start even diving into the um, the public key crypto bits, it's first important to understand more about, in this case, the SSH version 2 protocol and what all it entails. And this is not going to be like, you know, we could spend hours just talking about the intricate bits of it, but let's actually just kind of have like a yeah, high level, yeah, like, you know, what is this protocol that we take for granted? Oh, that's, that's the best way to learn about it, to be honest. So SSH 2, and this only applies to two, we're not gonna be talking about one. In fact, I advise turn one off and how do I know which one I have? You're, you're using two. Am in, I? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> unless you're from a like time machine from the 90s or something, oh, okay. you really shouldn't be using one. In fact, uh, I advise to turn it off just okay. so that, you know, because some clients will like drop down from two to one if things don't go so well. Yeah. And then there's actually some awesome attacks that can be uh, performed against SSH protocol. Oh, version one. okay. So, so, anyway. so you pretty much default SSH2. Yes. Okay, cool. And um, That's good. <laughs> so there are a bunch of different layers to this protocol. And so the first layer that we're going to talk about is the layer one. Layer one is. Isn't that a hacker con? I have. In not. LA. It is. You mean a uh, hacker space? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've never maybe been it is there. Gone. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, the first one is the transport layer. 
Okay. And so what the transport layer does is it handles all the kinds of like uh, key exchange stuff. It handles the server authentication bits, okay. um, which have to do with, and we'll get more into this later, but the authenticity. Of the server itself? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, like a you know Gucci purse, you want to make sure it's authentic. Of course. Yes. It also hands I with obviously can handles. Those. It takes care of compression and encryption, uh, as well as like rekeying. Um, af typically, after one gigabyte of traffic goes through or okay. one hour passes, whichever comes first. Oh wait, so it. Well, everything is encrypted in an SSH okay. uh, tunnel or an SSH connection. Right. Which, yeah, I get that part. That what channel? Why does it change every hour or so? Like, so do I have be... to set that no, myself? No, no. This is the, this is the beautiful thing about these layers is they're all independent and they all kind of work together to make the whole system come alive. And the beautiful thing is the transport layer, in, in addition to handling the you know uh, compression and the authenticity mm -hmm. and stuff. Part of the encryption part that it does is to rekey so that, say, some were, were to like oh. brute force your they, session. Okay, they wouldn't have enough time to do it because it's already reset it's, itself. It's just going to keep changing. And so if oh, you, oh, okay, if got it. You could imagine if you always used like the same uh, key, right. then basically for like years and years. Well, then you know if somebody has that long to start hacking on your stuff, well then yeah, sure. But, okay, uh, so I know we haven't talked about it yet on the show, but is. The transport layer where that MD5 hash comes yes. into play? Yes, we'll get into that okay. next week when we start Got building it. the other servers and uh, and, and the key Sweet. fingerprints yeah. and All right. stuff. I won't step on that okay. any further. <laughs> well, the other uh, layer is the user authentication layer. Okay. So while this is for the authentication of the server, this layer, layer two, is authenticating is, you, the user, yes. the person that's signing in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the user authentication layer handles all sorts of client authentication requests. And I say requests because the beautiful thing about uh, the way that authentication works in SSH is that it is client-driven. What does that mean? Well, what it means is when you connect to an SSH server and say, hey, let's, let's play ball, yeah. um, it doesn't say, oh, what's your password? It doesn't say, oh, you know, what, what's your private key or, or anything like that. It, what it, it says... It does what you set it to do. Yes. Got so it. So you as the client can go ahead and... Uh, request many of the different kinds of modes of authentication okay. that it's going to uh, uh, allow. So the the first one that we've already talked about, obviously, uh, modes of authentication. Here we'll put modes. First kind of client uh, authentication mode that we've already talked about is um, password. Right, like what I did last week with the uh, SSH putty. Yes. Okay. The next one uh, would actually be, and that's what we're talking about this week would be uh, public keys. Yay, like what I'm doing. That's this a segment. B, not a P. Come on, yeah. <laughs> so public keys. But there are also more types of authentication that the client can request from the server. And if it supports it, it will go ahead and let you use those. OK. So the next one in this case would actually be keyboard interactive. OK. What is, I'm, I'm assuming that's me typing on a keyboard? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's that's one method, and here's the thing. I actually haven't in the field run into this, but from what I understand, the the reason for this is so that there can be multiple challenges in response, and that there can be like two factors of authentication, kind of mm -hmm. like you use um, before. You, I know you've talked about it in the past, like with Windows, and you like move stuff to USB. Um, it's really used for like one-time passwords. It's used. Oh, okay, like what I do with Google with Gmail, because I go. do the two-factor thing and it's a different password every time. Yes. Okay. I might actually like to explore this some more. I'm really mostly familiar with these in practice. Uh, this right. one does sound pretty cool. Uh, another one that's pretty cool, and again, I haven't seen implemented because it's kind of one of those like big enterprise things, uh, would be uh, GSS API. Okay. API sounds familiar. Well, yes, API being an application programming interface. Of course. Uh, the GSS in this case actually stands for Generic Security Services. All right. And GSS API actually is just a library um, in and of itself. It doesn't actually do any security. It's just a way to bring other security mechanisms into the fold. Oh, okay. So it's typically used um, for like NTLM 
You remember that's that's the authentication that Windows uses. Oh, uh, my password when I sign on. Right. Okay. Uh, in fact, you remember you you've cracked NTLM before yeah. with uh, off Con crack. Con yeah. Con or no, Con bypassed it. Off crack. Cracked. Oh, it. that's right. Yeah. Um, but GSS API, you're really only going to see in enterprise environments to okay. do things like Kerberos. Um, Kirby. Or NTLM. If you're, for example, integrating an Active Directory, and the reason okay. that you would do any of these is for single sign-on purposes. And that is to say, um, that is to say, like you log into your workstation, mm -hmm. and now you're logged into the company intranet and the email thing, oh, and this yeah. and that and the other thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think I did something kind of like that at the bank I worked at. Oh yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah, I just signed on, and then I was automatically able to get into everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, these are the ones that we're most uh, interested in. Okay. Um, and so before we get into the public keys and all that works, the last layer in all of this, layer three, is uh, actually the connection layer. Connection. Is that the connection between me and the server? That is. And ah. it is divided up into different channels, just like you have kind of like channels on, you know, Wi-Fi or, yeah. or, or channels on like a cordless phone or whatever. Each channel is like an, uh, is asymmetric communication. So we could be having a conversation about one thing as well as conversations about different things all, all along the same. Okay. And so these different channels um, would be, uh, first of all, there's a shell channel. Mm -hmm. Is that what I used in PuTTY? That is what you used in PuTTY initially when you were connecting yeah. and you uh, got an interactive prompt. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, the terminal you connected to Bash was the That's interpreter. That's the shell, the black box. Uh -huh. yeah, and shell can also be used um, for SCP uh, file transfer or SFTP, um, oh, FTP. another file transfer. Yeah. And so that is all done over the shell um, okay. channel. But there are other channels. In fact, we've already talked about them, but this is this, uh, we've talked about them in practice, but these are actually the things that they're using the channels. Uh, the first one being direct TCPIP. And so the direct TCP IP channel is for client to server forwards. So this guy is for forwarding. And then the next one, get this, is called the forwarded TCP IP. Which is not for forwarding. No, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so forwarded TCP IP, obviously another forwarding mechanism, and that one is oh for server to client. So this is client to server, okay. this one is server to client. We've talked about this stuff in the past when we were talking about yeah. those different uh, dynamic versus local versus remote, remote. forwarding. Mm -hmm. And so those are the um, those are the three different layers of SSH2, the transport, cool. user so, auth, and connection. So it's kind of like three different people that are working on the same project to get you, in the end, connected to mm -hmm. the server. So you have your your server, your user, mm -hmm. and kind of the tunnel, I guess sure, you would call it. Sure, the tunnels. It. There you go. Okay, yep. cool. Okay, so those are the fundamentals of the protocol. And when we get back, we're going to be talking about the authentication level and how we can use asymmetric key cryptography, aka public key cryptography, to do our authentication. Idea Paint transforms virtually anything you can paint into a high performance dry erase surface that erases cleanly every time. And Idea Paint gives you the space that you need to collaborate, interact, and fully explore your creativity no matter where you use it, big ideas are sure to follow. And Idea Paint is one of the most flexible, durable, and cost effective dry erase solutions on the market. So head over to ideapaint.com slash hack5 to learn more. Asymmetric key cryptography, also sometimes known as public key cryptography. All right. We'll see why in a second. The user layer. Yes. So the user layer, what we're talking about here is how we can use key pairs to go ahead and sign into our server. Okay. So we say public key cryptography, what we really mean our key, you'll also see it known as key pairs or um, key authentication or key based authentication. Basically, because it pairs with a private key and you have to have both of them to yes. authenticate. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about in this situation is if we have, for example. Very nice key. 
Thank you. Yeah, uh, this <laughs> right here would be our public key. Okay. And then we'll also have over here our, obviously, our <laughs> private key. Very nice. And sometimes this is also known as a secret key. Because it's secret. Yes. You can't tell anybody about it. And what's great about this is that, uh, you know, anyone can use your public key in this kind of a setup. Okay. Uh, the, the way that this is meant for is to be like, I would give you, or, or Alice, or Bob, or whatever, let's just use us as an example. I'm going to go ahead and give you my public key, and I'm going to retain my private key to myself, and I have to keep this guy secret. Right. Okay? Uh, hence the secret key. And so what this allows you to do is, if you have my public key, you're now allowed to encrypt anything you want with okay. this guy, right? And so you use this to encrypt a message, you send it to me, and now if anybody gets it, it's going to be garbage, right? Oh, okay. Once I get that, I use my private key to decrypt it. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you if uh, if I send this public key to anybody, can anybody decrypt it? But no, it's that's the thing. Only it's, you. The private key is for decryption, mm -hmm. the public key is for encryption, you can't encrypt you can't decrypt the message with the public key you have to have the private key and so you can't send me an encrypted message and I can't decrypt it with my public key I have to have my own pair asymmetric so if ah. you would uh, you know if we wanted to have a two-way conversation like that basically you would have to send me your own public key okay and then you know you would keep your own private key and then boom and we'll Got get it. into that a little later when we start talking about like GPG and other protocols that okay, use this cool. kind of stuff. But um, that's the basis of it. And the way that this works is because these two keys here, they have a relationship that is based on math. Mm. It's really hard to let's go shopping. <laughs> yeah. okay, and, and when I say hard, I mean that the whole premise of this notion is that it is hard to figure out uh, the, the private key based on the public key. So you could pretty much tell anybody and uh, so let's just put math here <laughs> to but overly simplify things. I'm assuming that it is possible to figure out the private key from the public key if somebody had it. Okay, so like if you're the NSA and you've got like giant warehouses of supercomputers. Um, Which I obviously do. Or maybe they have them in Utah or they're building them. I don't know. But. Uh,